So the next type of uh, stress that we are going to consider is what we call torsion, which uh, torsion, of course, is applicable for shock, meaning that uh, shock is undergoing torsion or will be considered as a shear in torsion. So we have two types of uh, shafts, the solid shaft and the hollow shaft, with of course its uh, diameter in concern. The equation involved for considering torsion is the general form of the equation SS is equal to TC all over J. And another equation that is important for considering torsion for shock is theta is equal to TL all over JG. And considering the power equation, the formula for considering power in terms of torsion is equal to 2 pi tf. Well, of course, we are going to consider it here SS, that is shear in torsion. T is the torque and C is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the fiber concern, or in this case, mostly outer fiber. J is polar moment of inertia. Then theta in there is angle of deflection or angle of twist. So this equation in here, this formula for theta is equal to TL all over JG, that will be in terms of the region. So that if we wish to have theta in terms of the degrees, because that is angle of deflection or angle of twist, we are going to multiply this TL all over JG, which is in terms of the regions, and we are going to multiply it by 57.3, meaning 57.3 degrees per region. So if we multiply this by 57.3 degrees per region, region and region will cancel out and it will be in terms of the degrees. So that is for the angle of twist. L is uh, the length, and G is the modulus of rigidity, which of course this modulus of rigidity taken, that is taken uh, in English, that is 11.5 times 10 to the 6. So, for solid shaft, we have the C equal to the diameter divided by 2. The polar moment of inertia is 5 g to the 4 all over 32. So that the shearing stress equation now for solid shaft becomes T multiplied by T over 2 all over 5 d to the 4 over 32 or SF is equal to 16 T all over pi D Q. For hollow shaft, the C is equal to D O over 2. The polar moment of inertia is pi over 32 multiplied by the quantity capital letter D to the 4 minus the small letter D to the 4. So that SS now is equal to T multiplied by the quantity D sub 
or capital letter T over 2 multiplied or divided by pi over 32 multiplied by the quantity capital letter D to the 4 minus the small letter D to the 4. So that SS now is equal to 16 TD over 5 multiplied by the quantity capital letter D to the 4, that is the outer diameter, minus the small letter D to the 4, that is the inside diameter. So these two equations are the ones that will be applied for considering shock in torsion. Another thing to take into consideration for uh, shock in torsion, especially considering, considering the time stress. The, the uh, strongest material to sustain torsion is actually brittle materials. But uh, there are some books which tries to consider that is the property in terms of the yield. That is a question mark on my part. It is stated that the best material for shafting is the brittle material. And I haven't seen any shaft made of uh, a ductile material. Mostly, they are casted material. So when a material is called as a cast material, that will for sure a brittle material. So I don't, I don't know why they still consider the yield property of the material. When the brittle material will not have a property in terms of the yield strength. So that is a question, but by principle and by equation, we can always consider it uh, having the yield strength. But uh, I am, as I have stated, having a problem with that. That is why here I am going to consider a problem wherein I am going to use the ultimate strength property of the material, considering it to be, considering it to be a brittle material. Now, in considering the design stress, the design stress based on shear in terms of pure torsion. This is the one I am uh, mistaking because considering the shear in torsion based on yield, there is a suggested factor for the uh, property of the given property of the material. If we are referring to the yield, we multiply it by 0.6 SY. So yield strength is still being referred or considered and will be multiplied by a 0.6. That is an accepted by a universal accepted value by 0.6. But as I have stated, I am having a problem with regards to yield. I don't know with the uh, other, uh, other uh, what we call uh, this authorities probably regarding machine design. But uh, for me, pretel material is the best material for Shakti. So I always try to make of the ultimate property, which if we consider the design stress of the uh, 
preterm material, we multiply it by 0.75 on the SU for shear in torsion before we take the, the design stress. Now, for this problem, calculate the required diameter for a shaft with SU equal to 400 megapascal, capable of transmitting 65 horsepower at 2,400 revolution per minute. Let NU is equal to 4. Now, in this particular problem, not if we try to have a problem where English system of units is involved, so that the ultimate strength property that will be given on the material will be uh, taken from a certain table. But in this problem, was indicated that the ultimate strength is equal to 400 megapascal, I am made to understand that it, the 0.75 factor was already taken into consideration. So that if this is the ultimate strength where 0.75 factor has been taken equal to 400 megapascal, that is where we are going to consider our design stress based on ultimate. So it will be 400 megapascal divided by 4 will give us a 100 megapascal design that is such design stress based on ultimate. That is shear stress in torsion. So the design stress we will have is 100 megapascal. For the torque, which is equal to power over 2 pi f. So meaning that is a power in there over 2 pi f, f is actually the frequency or the revolution per minute. Now, the unit of power is given in terms of the horsepower, which is a unit used in English system of unit. So what we are going to consider now, because the problem is a mixture of unit. There is a SI system of unit, and we have an English system of unit. So there must be a conformity with the unit involved. Here we have it in terms of the megapascal, so that the torque we are going to have must be in the SI system such as newton meter. So this 65 horsepower converted to a uh, SI unit, where the conversion factor we are going to consider here is that there are 746 watts. 746 watts per horsepower. So that is 746 watts per horsepower. So that horsepower and horsepower cancels out. So the remaining unit we have is what's in here. That is a unit of power divided by 2 pi f. So that is 2 pi multiplied by the revolution per minute. This is again 
2400 revolution per minute. So, the revolution term, the revolution term here, this automatically cancelled out by the term 2 pi. One revolution, one revolution is actually equivalent to a region, which 2 pi here is also a region unit. So that is revolution and the 2 pi revolution automatically cancels out. So that is per minute in here. So we we convert the unit which is in terms of the minute in terms of the seconds. So the unit we have now here that is for the door is equal to what What seconds? We have the unit in terms of the what seconds for this thing in here. 65 by 746 by 60 all over 2 pi by 2400. So the unit, the remaining unit here is what, what second? So that what Second can be taken from that is one watt. One watt is equal to one newton meter per second. That is one watt. So if we have one watt in here, which is newton meter per seconds, the seconds unit here will be cancelled out by this. So the remaining unit we will have will simply be in terms of the Newton meter. So from considering the torque, which is now equal to power over 2 pi f, substituting all values and with the conversion of units, so that we will have a conformity with the SI unit for the design stretch based on ultimate. The torque now will be equal to 192.936 Newton meter. From the general equation, design stretch based on ultimate, is equal to 16t all over 5d cubed. That is, the design stress goes down, d cubed goes on the left side of the equal sign. Therefore, t is equal to the cube root of 16 multiplied by the quantity 192.936 newton meter over Pi multiplied by 100 megapascal with the corresponding conversion of unit we will have d will be equal to 21.418 millimeters say d will be equal to 22 millimeters. Now we are going to solve the second problem involving torsion. We have here, as stated on the problem, a hollow annealed propeller shaft has an external diameter of 340 millimeters and an internal diameter of 165 millimeters. It transmits 10,000 horsepower at 200 RPM. What is the torsional stress in the shaft? So we have here a hollow shaft 
where our uh, outside diameter is 340 millimeters and inside diameter of 165 millimeters. The power is 10,000 horsepower and the number of revolution per minute is equal to 300, 200. So we are asked to find here for the shearing stress that is developed. From the general form of the equation, SS is equal to 16 TD. All over five multiplied by the quantity capital letter D to the fourth minus letter small letter D to the fourth. So from the formula itself, we need the torque. So the torque now can be taken from the power, where we have the power is equal to 2 pi dm. So therefore, T now will be equal to power over 2 pi m, or that is 10,000 horsepower divided by 2 pi multiplied by the quantity 200 revolution per minute. So that is the 10,000 horsepower converted to what? That is, we have set watts per horsepower. So that is horsepower and horsepower cancels out. The remaining unit will be in terms of the watts. Now we have here 10,000 multiplied by 746 watts. One watt is equivalent to a newton meter per second. So that what and what can be considered out, what remains now is the newton meter per second. Divided by 2 pi multiplied by the quantity 200 revolution per minute. The revolution term in here is automatically cancelled out by the 2 pi term. And the minute unit here will go up in here so that we can have T equal to 10,000 multiplied by 746 newton meter per second. Or that is newton meter per second with a minute and minute here, that is 60 seconds per minute. So minute and the minute cancels out. The seconds and the seconds cancels out. The remaining unit will be in terms of the Newton meter, all over 2 pi by 200. And we will have it at 356 0.188 kilo newton meter. So therefore, we can have the shearing stress in torsion equal to 16 multiplied by the torque 356.188 kilo newton meter multiplied by the outside diameter 340 millimeters multiplied by the or divided by pi over multiplied by the quantity 340 millimeter to the fourth minus 165 millimeter to the fourth. So that the shearing stress will be equal to 48.865 megapascal unit. Now the megapascal unit is taken, taken from the Kilo newton meter is here, which we convert it to, to a millimeter. That is 1,000 millimeter equivalent to one meter. Meter and meter cancels out now. We multiply by the 10 Q. The kilo newton term here will be uh, removed. All over five multiplied by the quantity 340 millimeter. 
so that the remaining unit will be in terms of the newton per square millimeter, which is a unit that corresponds to a megapascal unit. Now we are going to solve the second problem involving torsion. We have here, as stated on the problem, a hollow anil propeller shaft has an external diameter of 340 millimeter and an internal diameter of 165 millimeter. It transmits 10,000 horsepower at 200 RPM. What is the torsional stress in the shaft? So we have here a hollow shaft where our uh, outside diameter is 340 millimeters and inside diameter of 165 millimeters. The power is 10,000 horsepower and the number of revolution per minute is equal to 300. So we are asked to find here for the shearing stress that is developed. From the general form of the equation, SS is equal to 16 TD, all over pi multiplied by the quantity, capital letter D to the fourth minus letter, small letter D to the fourth. So from the formula itself, we need the torque. So the torque now can be taken from the power, where we have the power is equal to 2 pi dm. So therefore, T now will be equal to power over 2 pi m or that is 10,000 horsepower divided by 2 pi multiplied by the quantity 200 revolution per minute. So that is the 10,000 horsepower converted to what? That is, we have said for this per horsepower. So that is Horsepower and horsepower cancels out. The remaining unit will be in terms of the watts. Now we have here 10,000 multiplied by 746 watts. One watt is equivalent to a newton meter per second. So that watt and watt can be cancelled out. What remains now is the newton meter per second divided by 2 pi multiplied by the quantity 200 revolution per minute. The revolution term in here is automatically cancelled out by the 2 pi term. And the minute unit here will go up in here so that we can have T equal to 10,000 multiplied by 746 Newton meter per second, or that is Newton meter per second with a minute and minute here, that is 60 seconds per minute. So minute and the minute cancels out. The seconds and the seconds cancels out. The remaining unit will be in terms of the Newton meter all over 2 pi by 200 and we will have it at 356.188 kilonewton meter. So therefore, we can have the shearing stress in torsion equal to 16 multiplied by the torque 356.188 188 kilonewton meter 
multiplied by the outside diameter 340 millimeters multiplied by the or divided by pi over multiplied by the pi three hundred forty millimeter to the four minus one hundred sixty five millimeter to the four so that the shearing stress will be equal to forty eight point eight six five megapascal unit. Now the megapascal unit is taken taken from the kilonewton meter here, which we converted to to a millimeter. That is one thousand millimeter equivalent to one meter. Meter and meter cancels out now. We did multiplied by the ten q. The kilonewton term here will be uh, removed. All over pi multiplied by the quantity 340 millimeter. So that the remaining unit will be in terms of the newton per square millimeter, which is a unit that corresponds to a megapascal unit.